So I've had this CB1100 for nearly two months and I thought I'd better take a look at its service needs. Looks like it hasn't had an oil change since its first service. Uh, there's 9k on the clock now, so I'd say the oil's uh, pretty, much, uh, pretty much due for a change. But while I'm doing that, I thought I'd explore the cost and the effort of CB1100 ownership. Specifically on the maintenance side though. Things like insurance, road tax, uh, vary too much country by country to make any valid comparisons. So this isn't a cost of ownership video. I'm focused on the maintenance. As an aside though, depreciation looks to be industry average for the CB1100, from a European perspective anyway. Honda has a reputation for reliability, so I'm taking it that maintenance that's going to be my major cost of ownership, after fuel and insurance costs of course. Some notes uh, specific about my bike. It's second hand to me. It's out of warranty. It has just over 9k on the clock. That's kilometres. It's a lower tech bike. It's a chassis, engine and two wheels with minimum electronics. It's got fuel injection, electronic ignition and ABS. That's it. Oh yeah, and it's air cooled. So what does it take to keep this bike on the road? Let's have a look. Uh, premise number one, it's never going to see a dealer unless it has a catastrophic failure. So I'll be carrying out all of the service work myself, but paying retail for parts and using my own time. So with that being said, let's get started and have a look. What's the first thing we think about when we talk about servicing? Well, it's always oil, isn't it? Well, I'm just going to use a semi-synthetic semi oil, which uh, is recommended for this Honda. It's 10W30. Uh, it doesn't need a full synthetic. Uh, there's no point in spending uh, a fortune on oil on this bike, as long as it meets the Honda spec, which this one does. The oil service interval on this is 12,000 kilometers. The oil filter here uh, is every other oil service. And again, there's there's no benefit to changing it every oil service. You, you're just wasting money. Um, if Honda are happy for you to change that um, every second oil service, uh, then why wouldn't you do, just do that? So anyway, uh, 12,000 kilometers on the oil, 24,000 on the oil filter. I'll probably leave this, in, uh, this oil in for two years because uh, I'll never, uh, to 12,000 kilometers a year. Um, the oil came to 37 euros, oil filter uh, 10 euros, and a sump washer for a few cents, and uh, that's it. Of course, the only thing about uh, servicing it yourself is you've got to get rid of the oil yourself. Right, this has got to be one of the easiest things to do. Uh, this air filter is just underneath the uh, right hand panel. Um, and it's just an allen key and a screwdriver uh, taking off a plastic cover and pulling out the air filter this air filter is ginormous on this thing and there's no actual uh, service schedule for it really honda just say look clean it out blow it out with an airline uh, if it's a bit dirty uh, and just keep reusing it this air filter is going to be good for 40 or 50 thousand kilometers uh, really your air filter cost should be nothing uh, i've priced up a new honda one uh, they're 46 euros uh, if you wanted to change it but really I can't see you having to need to, there's no need to do it until you're 30 40,000 kilometers in don't go wasting money paying double that price on a K&N filter I mean even if you oil up a K&N filter they say you don't need to you know re-clean those for 80,000 kilometers Jesus look nobody's going to be you know very very few people are going to be doing 80,000 kilometers on this bike um, I would just stick with the original air filter and don't change it unless it gets really filthy. And if you do, a Honda one is half the price of a can and air filter. So air filter costs, I'm going to put those down as zero. Spark plugs, not needed till 24,000 kilometers. What can I say? That easy to get to. Don't have to take a tank off or anything like that. Here they are exposed <laughs> for everybody to see. Uh, the cheapest I found a set of four of these was 36 euros. Uh, but look, simplicity itself, you have all four changed in 10 minutes. Well, fluids, what have we got? Well, we've got front brake fluid, rear brake fluid, and clutch fluid. And that's about it. Uh, so... What we're going to do here is just uh, suck out the old fluid with a syringe. There's no point in bleeding that all the way through the system. So I've just got the two front calipers to bleed out. Um, 
easy enough to do. I just got a one way bleed valve here and it's easy enough to do by myself. I've just got an old uh, plastic milk carton and squeezing it through to top it off. Now to get to the clutch bleed nipple, you have to just uh, loosen off the gear change, me gear change mechanism and remove this uh, side plate here. You can use the Allen key in the tool kit to get to that, uh, but it's all simple stuff. Again, just take the reservoir cap off again and I'm gonna suck out the old fluid there. No point in bleeding that through the system. really only took 10 minutes. I'd say all three of them together probably took me about 40 minutes in total to do the whole lot. Now the rear reservoir, it's, it's a bit difficult. You can't get the cap off because a bit of frame metal's in the way. So you just loosen one, uh, one bolt and you can take the reservoir out and then drain the fluid out in exactly the same way I did at the front. Look, I picked up half a litre of uh, dot floor fluid and that cost me five euros. Cheap as chips. At only 88 horsepower, uh, this bike uh, is very light in consumables. Uh, the chain and sprockets, there's no sign of wear on them at all, basically. And there's 9,000 kilometres on this already. I don't expect to be replacing those for a long, long time. On the brake pads and rotors, they've barely been touched. So in 9,000 kilometers, there's been virtually zero impact on the discs front and rear. Uh, so that's really easy, very light on those. Uh, but when I do get around to doing them, they look very straightforward to do and they're fairly low cost. Front and rear pads, quality ones, branded ones, 81 euros. That's everything front and rear, both sides. And the chain and sprocket, I found a good quality set there. The DID, heavy duty, 163 euros with sprockets. So when it comes to changing the coolant, uh, you've got to get all the air out of these fins. Uh, I just use a, a normal brush. Uh, you can probably scoop it all out. It's a bit tricky at the back, but you can get in there and there's just enough room to get in the front. Right, that's the, uh, the old air out. Now, uh, Honda do have a kind of a, a Mountain Dew kind of a coolant. It's a bit expensive, so um, sometimes I just use a Castrol motorcycle cooling air. Um, uh, but it's a bit tricky, I find, to get that between all the fins. So I usually get my wife's hair dryer and... Yeah, it's a quick way to fill them up. Um, if you hold your hands at the back and the front there as you do it, it kind of just makes it a bit quicker. Uh, so, you know, a nice bit of killed air, air, air there. So that's the cool and change. So you can do it for free. Don't bother buying the expensive stuff. I mean, you know, there's no point in buying that. So, Let's say we've got our uh, five years leisure motoring, 4,000 kilometers a, a year. We hit the 20,000 kilometer mark. Time for a valve clearance, a, a check and adjust. And Honda have used a shim under bucket, valve shim. And unfortunately, that means the camshafts have to come out to uh, change the shims. So what you want to hope is that at that check, all your valve clearances are within uh, the range. And so look, you, you might get a, a, you could do that yourself, or you might get a reasonable dealer price to do that, because there's no plastics to take off. The tank can just be raised a bit or taken off easily enough. And uh, the rocker covers come off, and then the rocker covers, of course, the valve covers can come off, and they can be checked fairly cheaply. And you might only get charged, you know, two or three hours labor uh, for that job. If they are out of spec though, uh, 
that dealer's got to take those camshafts out. Or if you're really brave, do it yourself. And it's a shame Honda didn't use a, a shim over bucket on this. I have a Triumph Daytona 1200, that shim over bucket. Uh, look, I've got to take a lot of body work off to get to them and the, the valve cover head and all that sort of stuff. But I can measure them myself easy enough and change the shims easy enough with a valve shim removal tool. Here, it's quite complex because the camshafts have got to come out. It's a lot more work. And it's a shame when Honda were thinking about this engine, they didn't decide and say, look, this isn't a super high powered bike. Let's do shim over bucket and make it easier to service those uh, valve clearances. Uh, look, it's only chucking out 88 horsepower. Uh, look, we know why manufacturers do shim uh, under bucket to make them smaller so they can rev their engine more. But this revs out at 10,000 RPM. My Triumph revs out at 9,500 RPM. There's not, and it's 147 brake horsepower. So it can definitely handle the shim over bucket. They are the big ones on the Triumph and the, the small ones on here. But that that might have been nice. Now the only plus side is 20,000 kilometers, it's actually 12,000 miles, but near enough 20,000 kilometers, that's a nice service interval. And it might take you years to get to there if this is a sort of leisure bike. Uh, look, if you had a Royal Enfield 650, by the time you get to 20,000 kilometers, you would have been done your valves <laughs> three times by then. Uh, once at the 500 mile service, and then every 6,000 miles after that. Uh, the only thing is, of course, it's a uh, screw and lock nut on the Royal Enfield, and it's a much, much simpler job, uh, well within the reaches of any home mechanic. But I think you can be really lucky with the valve clearances on this thing. Uh, if you go to the forums, uh, especially one, this one, and you'll find there's a bunch of members there who have put down their valve measurements uh, over the years, and this thing keeps well in spec for a long time. There's the, odd, there's the odd person who's needed to do a bit of reshimming here and there, but there's a lot of people putting big mileage on these with no reshimming at all. So I would say a valve check at 20,000 kilometers, and if they're in the middle of your spec, do you know, I'd say you could almost leave it another 40,000 kilometers after that and leave it be. So if you're handy enough and you don't mind measuring them yourself, I'd say you could save yourself a good few quid, and this thing is rarely gonna need reshimming. There's no requirement to get your shims in the middle of the valve range they give you. If you measure a shim and it's anywhere within the range Honda give you, leave it, don't touch it. The only time you might want to reshim, if there is one or two out and you have to take the cam out anyway, then okay, it's a reasonable position to shim it in the middle of the gap. But otherwise, leave it well alone. So you could get away with 60, 70, 80,000 kilometers on this engine without taking that camshaft out, without ever reshimming it. A lot of people seem to have big mileage on these with no shim changes. That's no guarantee, of course, so you still gotta check them. Okay, things were going swimmingly well on the cost of ownership, <laughs> and then I got to the tires. Uh, they're tube tires, but I can't find any tube tires for this bike anywhere. And if you want these Dunlop Sport Max that Honda provide, provide, I had to write down the price, wait for it. The current price in Euro for a front is 757 euros from Honda, and the rear, 874 euros. <laughs> so we won't be buying the original OEM tires. So that means I've got to look for a tube, uh, a tubeless tire and fit the inner tube. Uh, look, if I'm going to go to the trouble of doing that, I think I'm going to convert these wheels to tubeless. And there's a company in Italy called uh, Bart Factory who will convert them for about 220 euros. Plus I've got to ship them there and a bit of shipping back. So I think by the time I pay shipping and stuff like that, it'll be about 280 euros to convert these to uh, tubeless. That will give me a better choice of tires uh, but I'll still be a little bit limited in that they're 18 inch and so there's a lot of ranges that just don't do that size uh, but there's still plenty out there still plenty of tube uh, tubeless tires out there to choose from for this bike so once these tires run out and I have to say they're wearing quite well 
Um, so there's 9,000 kilometers on these. So I think you could probably get nine, 12, possibly even 15,000 kilometers out of them easy. Um, I actually don't mind tubes. They don't worry me too much, but the fact that I can't get a tube tire, well then I might as well just convert them to tubeless and be done with it. So once I've got the converted, my tire costs won't be any more or less than any other bike. Uh, probably just because it's a low powered bike or it's, it's not hard on tires, you know, maybe my tire, cho my tire costs are gonna be low-ish compared to a, a super bike, but you know, uh, they might last a bit longer, that's all. Uh, so once I get these converted, my tire costs are gonna be similar to everyone else, but it's kind of ruined the cost of ownership story a little bit there because I've got to have a bit of a cash injection to get them converted. <laughs> So in summary, the CB1100, it's like a lot of bikes in this lower tech category, uh, typical naked roadsters. It's devoid of electronics. It has easy, accessible, low cost service items. You can get to everything. Uh, so it ranks well for easy home servicing in almost all categories. And it's pretty light on consumables like tires and chains. You can avoid a dealer for just about every part of this bike service, but it does have a complex valve adjustment routine, which could, which could uh, start racking up the cost. If you're a low mileage user, um, it's not going to be of too much consequence to you. But if you're going to put high annual mileage on this bike, be prepared to fork out for dealer servicing or learn how to do it yourself. If you lack the confidence, tools or time to do it yourself, maybe even learn how to measure those clearances so you know whether you can avoid that expensive dealer adjustment in the first place. That's just an idea. So for me, I think the cost to maintain this bike is very low, but there could be some gotchas if you're going to put big mileage on.